Hey guys, my name's Sage. I'm one of the engineers here at Emacs, and I work on a lot of the propellers and other propulsion systems for them. Or most people overlook the fact that propellers are one of the most important part to their drone, and they overlook kind of the, the challenges and, and how hard it is to design a, a properly working propeller. So, so our next propeller is a uh, Avon Micro, and it's coming out quite soon. Uh, there, there was quite a bit of challenges with this one. First off, it, it is meant to be a two-inch propeller, which is quite a small diameter and four small micro quads. You're constrained to very high RPMs and different, very fine-tuned weights, where every little thing matters with your drone. Every little, little extra gram matters. Uh, the problem to having a, a two-inch diameter propeller is how small the, the moving column of air is. Eventually, you hit an RPM where all of a sudden thrust is created and you got to play within that range. So to design a quad that has great low end versus enough high end, you, you have to have enough surface area interaction between the disc area. So that is why we went towards a quad blade design where you have more control at your low end and still have a, a good top end. So design starts always starts with design constraints. So like we talked about earlier, there's a two inch diameter. Uh, we also have constraints on what motor size that we're going to use and kind of what target weights. So we started off with some 1106 size motors or anything kind of near that range to ultimately need to get up to 30k RPM for this propeller to be operating, right? So that the, those set are design constraints. We need to be operating around 30,000 RPM and then now we're going to set a speed target. So like how fast do we need this micro drone to go? So we set a top speed or somewhere up around 75 miles per hour. And uh, getting a two inch drone there is, is it's a lot of fun and, and quite interesting to see. Uh, but that, that's what we achieved with the Avon Micro. So once we model that geometry, we can do some further tests and design, such as how strong will this be or what, what material we need to use to, or Will, will it create a lot of vibrations or wh where's its natural frequency modes and, and so forth and that's all done in design to where we, we select how thick the airfills need to be ultimately to make our structure requirements and ultimately our light, how light the, the propeller would be. After we, we decide on design after these simulations we start our prototyping. Uh, usually we would start our first initial prototype with an SLA print, print out a couple sets, cure them, and then a long tedious task of sanding them down and uh, balancing them and then initial flights. What's amazing with SLA printers is that we can print out a design the same day, have a test the next day, and we can iterate through designs very quickly. Once we decide on a blade design that we like, we then move forward with production and create some injection molds. But eventually we get the injection mold out with a balance prop and, and a various samples of plastic. So this is where we come into more durability testing. So we sit down we test different props uh, of different polycarbonate mixes or other plastics and we see uh, how long they last. And after we've, uh, we found the plastic that we like, uh, that, is, that meets our durability standards, we uh, push forward on production and just push out a lot more through our injection mold machine. So after all this testing is done, we, uh, we begin shipping them out to all you guys. Start at the factory, figure out packaging, figure out how to market it, and push it forward. I believe you guys are really going to enjoy this prop. It brings a considerable amount of control to your two-inch quads. You finally have a way to predict different throttle levels, different rotations, different cornering, it, it, it flies so much better. You finally have a lot more linear control across your throttle band. You can corner better, you have a low end again, something that all we haven't been able to achieve just on a little two inch quad. And, it, and it, now it's my favorite quad by far. This little two inch quad, they fly similar to our five inch quads and it's a lot of fun. So definitely give these, these props a try. Uh, they'll be worth your while. So there are a lot of challenges to making a small propeller. One being a two inch diameter is, is not a great amount of disc area there. So in order to get enough thrust, you have to really accelerate the, the column of air through the flow. 
And here we're going to look at a simple propeller disc actua actuation theory. Here we have our, our black line representing our propeller disc and we have our free stream velocity. So this would be how fast your quad's moving. So we have a free stream flow and this is what the flow kind of shapes up to look like as it moves through your propeller. We have the flow accelerate slightly right before the disc and accelerate further as we push through to the wake. Now we can look at a, a generalized thrust equation. Here this says thrust is the mass flow rate of your exhaust, so your wake right here, times the velocity of the wake minus the inflow flux mass flow rate, right, which is right up in here, times the velocity of that. And now in terms of our quadcopters, that's pretty minuscule compared to this, this part of the equation. So here we see in a general form thrust is proportional to the velocity of the wake of your propeller. Now, with a two inch propeller, since our mass flow rate is not as great due to the small disc area of two inch, we really have to accelerate V to get our wake going to create the thrust needed. Uh, that, that plays havoc in this system since it's a lot less efficient. So now we can view the system as, as in terms of energy, we have energy in coming in from our batteries and propeller turns, motor turns, and ultimately we're looking for speed of our aircraft, so our quadcopter moving, and yet there's still energy loss, it's energy of the wake. So problem is here, you can view a kind of energy of the wake being kind of just a bunch of little particles, so you can view it as kinetic energy in a sense, to where kinetic energy has an equation of one half times the mass times the velocity squared. This is the important part. The squared relation to the velocity of the wake, yet we have to propulse it a lot forward, so thrust only goes up linearly as energy loss goes up in a squared rate. Now that's what, how we play havoc in terms of efficiency with a two inch propeller, and that is the ultimate main physical challenge to designing this two inch propeller. So to start a design, we need to set the constraints so we have a goal to design too. And Here's basically how we start with that. We gotta talk about generally in the regime of how fast is our propeller supposed to go, how slow, and so on. Like what's the top speed, what is cruise speed, and, and ultimately how your performance. Uh, and then we gotta look at um, your, your motor, like your RPMs. At what, how, how fast is this propeller supposed to rotate? That dictates greatly on, on how much lift it can generate and so on. And then we got to look at how much power do you have and how much thrust is required. So in terms of a, a micro quadcopter, you have somewhere in the lines of all weights around like 120 or 150 grams, hopefully less. Uh, but that ultimately dictates how much power is needed for said RPM and for how fast it needs to go. Uh, and other constraints would be geometry. So the diameter, as we talked about earlier, two inch and the blades which comes into other decision making. So for our two inch, we, we sort of set a design constraint like top speed around 75 MPH. RPMs are range greatly for two inch because they need, they need to be rotating so fast to get the column of air to move fast enough. So generally you're looking between 10K to around 50K RPM is our design range, which correlates to a around a 5,500 kV or 6,500 kV motor at three, at three cell. And that's sort of the sweet spot for the RPM range. You get both a good low end and a great top end performance to get you up to this speed. Uh, next we talk about power thrust required. That's ultimately dictated by they still have all of weight around 120 grams. And we have geometry, we're, we're locked in at two inches. And next blade's decision becomes based off of how you want the propeller to perform. So with this propeller, we wanted a lot more control and a, lot, a good low end performance versus uh, with our top end. So that led us to go to, to a four blade design. Four blades allows a, enough thrust to be generated around a 10,000 RPM regime and still get high enough to get us up to speed. And, and next we're gonna start talking about how geometry gets set for the propeller 
across different sections. Here we have a top view of our propeller. And now we're gonna look at one cross section of it, expand it over to here, and this is a general air pool shape. This is sort of the basis of something called blade element theory. Here we just have a velocity triangle and ultimately how the trigonometry sets up for a propeller at each given session, section at some station. So here we have our velocity coming in. This is our free stream velocity accelerated by some amount at our propeller disc. So that's our velocity coming in. Next we have the rotational flow since the propeller is rotating rotating, let's say that way. Uh, that has another velocity component to itself, that is its rotational speed times its radius station. That's important to realize because as you move further out in your blade, the rotational speed is a lot greater versus inside on the blade. So it varies from zero to up. So here we see this is our flow angle and so flow angle is greatest when our rotational speed is slow, as in you're near the hub. And our flow angle is uh, the sh most shallow when, when um, uh, a rotational speed is, is greater, so towards the tip. So this goes into the shape of how our blade twists. So here we have a picture of our velocity triangle where we have our our velocity of our free stream plus some amount. That comes from over here. It accelerates by some amount, the velocity coming in. And then we have another component of our velocity being the rotational speed. So this is uh, the speed that changes as we move out the radius. Rotational speed is greatest as we're at the tip versus, and it's the least as we're near the hub. So this is important to realize because it, it really changes how our blade angle sets up. So as, as we're near the hub, rotational speed is, is less, this triangle shrinks, whereas this is taller, our angle is greater. Versus as we get towards the tip, uh, the speed is greater versus this speed, so our angle gets smaller. Now this is important to realize because this really dictates the, the twist shape of our propeller blade. Now a lot of our designs have a steeper angle blade near the hub for this very reason, though rotational speed is very small, yeah, our free stream speed dominates. So we need to set up our airflow in a way to where we hold a, our angle of attack or, correctly. Next, the hard part of how do we find out how much like our flow is accelerating into it. And this is where different um, aerodynamic theories come into play. Something called vortex lattice models is one way that we use to set it up. And simply it's just a bunch of vortexes coming out at different, at different stations along your blade in infinitesimal small amounts. So we have a vortex shutting off in a helical way because our, our propeller is rotating and moving in a flow. So our design goal for our propellers is keeping this helical wake of vortexes constant. That helps us dictate and set up the flow based off a vortex lattice model and ultimately solve for our inflow velocity. And then we know the angle on our blade, or our alpha, or angle of attack on the airfoil at each given station. Next is choosing how you want to set up the fixed angle based on our design constraints to be most efficient or most effective or how big you need the cord to be, or a bunch of other design choices. Now that comes down to airfoil choice, or airfoil design. So the airfoil design, you look at a CL curve and a CD curve and ultimately a drag puller. So airfoils generate a certain amount of lift and stall at greater angles. And as we go up in angle of attack, drag of course increases. Now the best place to start for a design is to minimize your lift to drag ratio, or to maximize your lift to drag ratio. So your CL versus your CD, you want to maximize that, or minimize CD to CL, versus what we look at drag pullers, we want to be right down in here. We want the least amount of drag for the most amount of lift that we can gain. 
and that sets up a correct angle to where we need to be at. And ultimately that's how we solve for our blade angle. Now all this is done at a bunch of stations along the blade, so a lot of calculus and iterative techniques is used to add it all up across your blade and ultimately get your, your thrust and your, and your drag out, out of your, your performance predictions. And this is how we do our simulations, sort of the basic understanding to the math and the aerodynamics behind propeller design.